I'm David Carraway. As a test run for all this video stuff we're going to be doing, I'd like to take up the topic uh, of pandemic disease in Italy. Not the current coronavirus crisis, but cholera in Naples in 1910-1911. Uh, this was probably the last major cholera epidemic in Western Europe. Uh, most of us are familiar with the public health measures taken during the middle and late 19th century, uh, which things such as uh, sewers, fresh water lines, which eradicated cholera. Uh, um, but this was one of the later ones. Uh, what happened? Uh, cholera broke out in southern Italy in the summer of 1910, although Naples, the largest city in southern Italy, if we ignore Sicily and Palermo, was not immediately affected. Uh, Naples was only affected the f by the fourth week of September. Uh, the third week of September, there were heavy rains in Naples, and these washed uh, garbage and dirt into the city's cisterns, and that's probably the origin of the epidemic. Now, what we have here is an unusual story. Uh, the responses to it, uh, it's a mixture of acknowledgement, denial, minimalization, and full-on panic. Uh, the city government of Naples initially denied that there was any cholera in the city, even though by September 25th, uh, uh, the city was aware there was cholera in the city. Uh, the city, a few days later, acknowledged its presence, but minimized the risk, told Neapolitans to go about their business, no big deal. Uh, the number of cases continued to uh, accelerate, and the city, strangely enough, on October 30th, declared the epidemic was at an end, that cholera was no longer present in the city. Um, this has a lot to do with uh, what we would call in history the context. Uh, first of all, 1910-1911, Italy was celebrating its 50th anniversary of unification. And the country wanted to present to the world the face of a happy, advanced, and rapidly advancing uh, nation. Uh, Naples in particular uh, had a, a vested interest in protecting its reputation because Naples was one of the largest ports through which emigrants from southern Italy uh, emigrated to the Argentina and the United States. And the money these uh, emigrants spent while awaiting passage, they spent in Naples in hotels, restaurants, what have you, markets, uh, was an important source of income to the city. Uh, and local government, uh, part of their fear was that if this was harmed uh, through the information of color going out, this would harm investment. Uh, um, now, uh, what the city did was quietly hire extra doctors, nurses, uh, and um, <clears throat> grave diggers. Um, began surveilling in secret railroad passengers for signs of illness and began discouraging people from buying fresh fruit and vegetables in markets. Uh, when the national government started to get in the act, the, the Prime Minister of, of, uh, of Italy, uh, Luzzati, uh, the first Venetian Prime Minister of, uh, of Italy, uh, proposed uh, uh, putting the transits to Argentina and the United States in government-run hostels on the edge of town. Uh, he was trying to keep the lucrative immigration business from, uh, from, <laughs> being, from, from being shut down by health officials from Argentina and the United States who were stationed in Naples. Uh, the United States has an agency, it's, uh, the United States or had, uh, which, which's been, I think, taken up in other agencies. The United States Public Health Service, which if I'm not mistaken, was established near the, at the end of the 18th century. And we had medical officers stationed in ports such as Naples uh, uh, to uh, warn uh, any U.S. officials if there was perhaps any problem with epidemic disease coming over on one of the boats. When the national government proposed this measure to put transits in, uh, in, in government housing on the edge of town, the Neapolitan government reacted furiously. Uh, first of all, it denied that cholera was present. Uh, second, it called the, the plan a plot by foreigners, socialists, and northern Italians uh, to sabotage the growing prosperity of Naples. 
uh, partly fueled by the investment money made available from this uh, from this uh, transit uh, income. Uh, and it even went so far at one point to tell the population of Naples to prepare for an armed insurrection against the national government. Now, I, I suspect this was more uh, uh, big mouth than uh, some measure was uh, intended. Uh, the prime minister, uh, the, the opposition to this, the prime minister, uh, Luzzatti, withdrew the uh, withdrew the measure. His government fell shortly thereafter. Um, what you see in the episode is a suppression of information. Uh, information was suppressed in various ways. Um, uh, Parliament refused to take up the matter. Uh, well, if it's not debated in Parliament, then it's not published in the newspapers. That takes care of that. Uh, Naples, uh, which is still a rather poor city, had an extensive network of soup kitchens for the poor. And the cholera broke out largely in poorer neighborhoods, so the city government closed the soup kitchens. Uh, again, they were, they were fearful that some of these uh, public health officials, say from the United States or Argentina, might notice that there are very sick people in line at the, at the soup kitchen. Um, medical journals kept silent. Um, bribery, self-interest, don't know. Uh, Local and government and national government flat out bribed journalists not to write about it. And in some cases, uh, where uh, private individuals printed up pamphlets to distribute to the population about, hey, there's a problem here, uh, police seized them. Uh, uh, we now know that the US public health official in uh, Naples knew but kept silent. Uh, in the case of the Argentine public official who also knew, uh, he was told, and his government was told, that if they let any news of this leak out, that Argentina would be uh, threatened with uh, or hit with trade sanctions and, uh, or diplomatic sanctions. Um, now, what began to change? Uh, in August 1911, so about uh, oh, 10, 11 months into this, the Vatican newspaper began writing uh, vehemently uh, against the cover-up. Uh, and after the Vatican began to write about it, the socialist newspapers in Italy began to write about it. Um, Italian doctors invited or encouraged the Italian government to invite the British physician Leonard Rogers. Now, Rogers was legendary. He was a British physician in India, and he's the one who developed the rehydration technique to treat cholera victims. Uh, the national government was reluctant to allow him in the country. They eventually did so. They allowed him to go to Palermo and practice medicine there for three weeks. Italian doctors wanted to learn from him, uh, but he was barred from traveling to Naples. And after his three weeks in Palermo, the Italian government uh, uh, told him, uh, thank you very much. You'll be leaving now. Now, an interesting case in comparison, I think, is the, the, the Neapolitan uh, epidemic of 1884, also cholera, uh, which was a larger epidemic. But in 1884, when city officials reacted with, uh, uh, to try to bring it under control with isolation and sanitary measures, the local population uh, rebelled. Uh, armed revolts broke out. Uh, there was nothing of the sort in 1910 or 11, despite the hyperbole from, from city officials. Um, and now a few differences, obviously in 1884, the city government openly tried to suppress uh, the, 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 the pandemic, whereas in 1910, 1911, uh, they tried to suppress the information of the pandemic or minimize it. Moreover, in, in 1910, 11, the population was more medicalized, a term invented by historians to, to indicate that uh, medical science was largely accepted by the population. Uh, germ theory was widely accepted, okay, the medical community, the, uh, accepted it. Educated opinion in Italy accepted germ theory uh, by 1910. Uh, and there's one of the big changes that the Catholic Church's attitude in 1884 was uh, this is a divine punishment as a result for a, a moral failing or sin, you know, sin, something like that. Uh, whereas in 1910, 1911, the Catholic Church flat out said, this is microbes, take some public health measures. Uh, so a big switch there, and also in 1884, Italy was a much poorer place than it was in 1910, uh, and there was no 50-year uh, uh, like quincentennial or something or other uh, anniversary to celebrate. Um, so. Anyway, that's uh, cholera in Naples uh, 
in uh, 10 minutes or less. Uh, I'm David Carraway. Thank you for watching.